Welcome to The Skill Ranch. This podcast is designed to equip entrepreneurs, professionals, and consultants with skills to impact tomorrow's work environment. Now here's your host, Bilal. Welcome to The Skill Ranch podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Erica, who is a John Maxwell Certified Disc Consultant and Healthcare Leadership Coach and a trainer. Having 25 year experience working in healthcare as a nurse manager, practice director, she's passionate about working with healthcare professionals that desire more career satisfaction and want to improve their leadership skills. She's also passionate about what her mentor, John Maxwell teaches. The only way to have a better tomorrow is through personal growth today. Today, we are going to discuss about this personality assessment and how they can help jumpstart personal awareness. Thank you so much for being on the show, Erica. How are you doing today? I'm doing great today, Bilal, and I really appreciate you allowing me to join you. So Erica, for the audience today, could you please share a bit about about your background and what you are currently doing? Sure. I'll try to keep it short. As we're talking about disc personality assessments, I'll uh, let the cat out of the bag up front. I'm a CSI, so I'm a blend of three styles. Cs tend to give too much detail, so for our D audience, I'll keep it a little shorter. Um, One of the things, uh, I could go on about my background, but I've been in uh, nursing and actually with a focus in oncology for many years, uh, the 25 years, and I, I always was on, I had an inner desire to have a happier, better life. And when I started in oncology in my twenties and the gift that gave me was I realized early in my life, how precious life is. And so I really went on a journey early on to try to find how to make my life better. And, you know, we have a lot of challenges, you know, I was a young mother and working and all of those things. And then in leadership. So I discovered personal development and growth, and I realized that really helped me become a better person, and I enjoyed and loved my life more. Uh, So that's a little bit of background, trying to keep it short. I could go on to for hours about my background, so I've got a lot of a lot of stuff I've done over the years. And and throughout those different backgrounds, and likewise for me too, we interact with so many individuals. And some of those uh, relationships are that that we remember them throughout our life or how positive they were. And on the other hand, there were some instances that we would like to forget because they didn't work out well. And that is the core of what our discussion would be. So to begin, uh, Erica, could you please share about what is DISC and provide a brief history of this personality type for our audience? I would love to. The the C in me, again, I'm going to go back to the styles so you can actually kind of see how they work. Uh, I love the history. And and so, but, but what a DISC personality assessment or indicator is, it is not a test uh, because there's no pass or fail. We are just who we are. Uh, but it's it's a way to see the four basic styles and, and the history of disc actually goes all the way back to 444 BC, where they've, you know, identified that, you know, there's four basic styles of personality. Um, And then, you know, it's kind of gone from earth, wind, fire, and water to uh, the fluids. And then in 1928, Dr. Merston, Dr. William Merston uh, discovered Uh, he created the DISC, which is a little easier to understand the four basic styles. Uh, A little fun fact about Dr. William Merston, um, he also uh, was partially the inventor for the lie detector test, and he is the creator of Wonder Woman. (laughs) So when I found that out, I thought it was really neat. Um, But the four different styles are D, you know, for DISC, dominant, I for inspiring, S for steady, and C for compliant. Uh, and so, you know, you, you basically have four styles, but we can be a blend of all. And like I said in the beginning, I'm kind of all three. I'm three of the four, um, but I, it fluctuates based on what I'm doing or my stress level and what environment I'm in. So. 
Now I would ask because you mentioned already you have three styles, but we sometimes see that in different scenarios and as you mentioned like stress level, anxiety level, whether it's the morning part of the day where we are fresh or at the night time when we are tired, we do revolve around all those styles and I would say that is sometimes of your life you would also have acted as a D. So how just for the people who would like to know that whether they are just one particular style or they are blend of all four of them. So um, whenever you're, you're trying to figure out if you're just one or a blend, we, we're naturally wired. Um, and some people are wired to where they're just more than one, more one style. And you can kind of tell, you know, because like a D, the D style is more dominant. Uh, they tend to be more aggressive. My husband is a D personality. Um, he's a blend too, but he's, his core wiring is D and he can be really direct and someone that doesn't know him can be a little bit off put by it because he can be really direct. Um, eyes are really fun and outgoing. So if you want to kind of know your eye friends, they are always the life of the party. Uh, they're, they're just the fun people to be around brighter and I have find myself since a little little tidbit when I was a nurse I would find myself looking to see how good someone's veins were <laughs> whether I could start an IV you know you're standing in the line at the grocery store and you're just kind of looking it's like oh I could get an IV on that one now with disc I kind of do the same thing and it's like if I see someone that's brightly dressed and really you know a lot of jewelry and it's like they're not afraid of not being noticed I can tell they're pretty eye-wired. Uh, C's and S's are really reserved. So they're going to be more neutral colors and like blend in and don't want to be seen. D's can be a blend of both. Uh, they can be a bold and outgoing, but they tend to be a little bit more sharp and fast. So anyway, I kind of got a little bit off, but I love, you know, looking at people. S's, um, S's are your steady. They, they hold, they're the glue. They're great listeners. They're the ones in an office whenever you're, and, and you have a, a, an employee that everybody's lined up south of the door to tell them all their problems. They're an S because they're really good listeners. Um, they are kind of the nurturers of the family. So at home, you know, the mom or, or the dad. So a lot of times it's the dad that's the S. And um, we kind of forget that, but they're the ones that kind of hold it all together and keep the peace. They're kind of the mediators. Uh, and C's are, are really analytical, uh, precise. We, we like data and someone will tell us something and we won't necessarily disagree, but we're going to go look it up and fact find it and make sure that's really the truth. <laughs> and, and we don't like it when it's, when there's not data to back up something. So anyway. That kind of answer the question, Philip. Yeah, like if, if you see, like everybody, when they are making a decision, if they don't, um, like take the example of a grocery shop, you have to take that decision that is more like a D decision that I need this thing for my home. Mm -hmm. If uh, you meet a salesperson that sells to you and you would start interacting with them, that becomes an I. If you are just going on a particular time that I would do my grocery at 10 a.m. on Saturday morning, that's it. You become an S. A C would be somebody who will really look, uh, are they selling the right thing, compliance? And, and sometimes if you see, Eric, um, both of us uh, or my colleague, your colleague would have been through this process and we're just from talking about just grocery shop. This is just one thing. We far many examples within in our life that we can realize that we are not one personality so we can have a dominant personality out of the four but don't get attached to one try to re rewire your brain to the thing that looks positive for you and that would be a good outlet so discussing uh, all these four what would be the strengths uh, of these uh, four uh, four personality types, Erica. So of the uh, the strengths of a D, Ds are decisive. They they tend to be uh, strong leaders because they can make a decision and they don't fret over their decisions. 
uh, they're bold, uh, they're direct, and you know, these are really good in emergency because they can make quick decisions. Uh, they like results, so they're very result driven. And so, you know, I think that that's really the main strengths of a D. The strengths of an I is, is they're really good at inspiring because they're fun to be around. They're encouragers. They're the ones that are kind of the cheerleaders of the group. Um, and, you know, they're, they're the fun people. The, fun, the people, when you want to kind of relax and you just want to let your hair down, go hang out with an I because they're going to make you laugh. I guess really is the thing. If you want to laugh, hang out with an eye. Uh, C's, again, their strengths is, is that, that nurturing, the, the mediator, kind of being the good listener, you know, really holding the team together. Uh, in a workplace, they're the ones that have really good follow through. They tend to get the work finished. They may be a little slower at getting it done at times, but they don't leave loose ends. And then your seeds are your analytical people, your engineers and planners and organized. So our strengths are being organized and, you know, dotting I's, crossing T's and good proofreaders, you know, <laughs> kind of the perfectionist of the group. So or they wear you out. Like lie detectors of the group, whether good things yeah. or not. So Erica, just, just a very quick question here. In all this crisis that has happened for the last six, seven months, which uh, personality type would you see being the greatest fit of taking good decision, helping countries overcome, as well as communicating with the people to ensure they are well informed? Which personality or a mixture would you pick? Um, that, that's an interesting question because I have done a lot of thinking about the different things that people are doing based on their styles. Um, I think as far as Probably C's and S's. I, I think having a good blend of that. The, the pro we need some D in there though. So it, it's kind of, we need someone that can make some good decisions. But I think we need facts that are, because right now I think there's so many, there's so much misinformation. And of course, social media makes misinformation out there, but it's kind of, I know for me personally, I, I get frustrated because the numbers don't match what my logic tells me they should. And so it's like, I wish there was somebody out there that was really like a good statistician that was really making sure the numbers were right. <laughs> but that's a C person talking, you know. Uh, and, and I think I want our listeners to hear us that what is important to you, you're seeing it through the filter of your own personality style. So if you're a D and you're sitting there going, no, we need a leader that is going to make some decisions and they're going to get us results and they're going to get that vaccine out, then you're probably a D because you're going to look at it from your perspective of your style. Uh, and that's why the communication of uh, knowing what a, your disc is helps you have better communication because you can see different perspectives. Um, I think S is because they care about making sure everything's safe and secure, that security. I think that's important. Um, so, and my poor little I friends, um, I is the opposite of C. Uh, I was married to an I for 20 years. I've learned to be a little more I because I was in a relationship with an I for 20 years. Um, I wish I had understood him better. Um, our relationship would have been so much different if I had had this. Uh, because I don't, if you'll catch, I don't share a lot about eyes because I understand them kind of the least <laughs> personally. I mean, I understand them on paper, but um, anyway, I'm kind of getting a little bit off track. No, like I, I like the way you shared because, uh, and there to like whatever we see is from our own perspective. So as I asked you the question, my thought was D, um, mm -hmm. D with, a, with an I or like on a 50-50 basis or a 55 45 basis and the reason being that uh, we need solid decision making up front uh, that a decision needs to be taken and then ensure that decision is uh, something that is also communicated to the public uh, and you need an eye um, you can't just order someone you need to connect with them share the problem 
and then tell them how the things needs to be done in order to come out successful at the end. But then rapid decision needs to be taken because you took a decision, of course, this is a new pandemic, nothing of this sort has happened. Uh, so you need to relearn, you need to adapt, you need to analyze, and then again, take a decision. So it kind of shift towards C2 in a, in a bit, but like it's more like I need to continuously keep myself improving, keep taking decisions, and only I can uh, help uh, the country or a company or even myself, like as an individual, we need to take some decisions. And I, I kind of resonated with the thought that I'm thinking from my side, from my brain, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to know what somebody else thinks and how different their opinion or perspective can be. Yes. And, and, and I know that when we had a meeting before, uh, you were asking me a lot about S. And S is your opposite personality. And, and so, and I is my opposite. So it's kind of interesting that we want to know a little bit more about our opposites. Uh, I always joke, you know, it's not really a joke. Opposites attract. So you end up in a relationship with someone that's opposite of you and you don't really know how to communicate. You, you, you do, but in the beginning, but as life goes on, you don't understand, you can't understand that person's perspective. And, you know, that's one of the reasons I love doing DISC and, and studying it and helping people understand each other better because just a little tiny bit of awareness in another person's perspective makes life so much better for both parties so, <laughs> so much better yeah and that is where let's dive into communication so how can we communicate uh, with different styles and and like we picked up few things because uh, i think so we are connected also and we know a bit about this but let's you meet a stranger out uh, in the public uh, and like take the example of pre-COVID because now everybody kind of keeps a safe distance, doesn't want to interact that much. But once we know like we have an individual, we would like to talk how to understand their personality type and then how to adapt so that we can communicate with the way that resonates best with them. I think part of is trial and error. You know, if I love the fact of if I have trouble communicating with someone, that's when I know I'm not connecting. If I walk away from a conversation feeling kind of icky, like it didn't go like I wanted, then I start really digging in and trying to figure that person out, you know, because I think we can spend too much energy trying to figure some uh, as a C speaking to our C audience again, but it's uh, we can spend too much time analyzing. You wouldn't do that so much as a D, but Whenever we are like, so I'm communicating with you and I know you're a D and I, so I know that I need to keep it brief. I need to not carry on with a whole bunch of details. You don't care what I ate for breakfast, you know, and all of the, you know, it's like, keep it short and understand that you're going to be direct with me and it's not personal and you're not hurting my feelings. You just want to get it done and get on to the next thing. And that's just okay. Um, eyes, they tend to, Whenever you're communicating with an I, you've got to keep it friendly. You've got to smile. Uh, C's and S's can get kind of, the, they're the more reserved personalities. They can kind of be in their head. So if you see someone kind of running around with a frown, it's not so much that they're not happy. They may just be really deep in thought. Smile whenever you're talking to an I. Compliment them. They need appreciation and compliment. They need the compliments. If they have on really pretty shoes, tell them, you know, I really love your shoes because if they have bright red and green shoes on, they want you to notice them. <laughs> um, that's something I've kind of learned. So, but when you're communicating with them, keep it friendly. Know you're going to have to follow up. Uh, I have a story of a lady. She's a hairdresser. And, and you can, when you walk in the room, you can tell she's an eye because she's loud and she's, everybody's paying attention to her. And I walked up next to her one day and I was just studying and learning this. And uh, she was like, I don't know that person's name over there. He just told me this whole big story and, and he's, you know, but I don't ever get anybody's name. You know, it's like, they'll stand and talk to you for 30 minutes and they will never get your name because they're just too busy talking and thinking. And uh, so anyway, when you're talking with an I, move fast, know you're going to have to follow up. Uh, S's, 
no conflict. S's are petrified of conflict. D's, opposite. D's aren't afraid of conflict. They, they will speak out at a restaurant that they don't like the food, or an S is crawling under the table. Like, please don't mention that you don't like the food. Uh, no conflict. So keep it, you know, peaceful, non-threatening, uh, calm, and appreciate their work. They need, they need a lot more appreciation, but not public praise. Um, one of the things I find interesting is when I'm doing a review with someone on it that's an S, I'll say something about they need appreciation. They always say, no, they don't. And I'm like, no, you don't need to be called up on stage and given an award. You don't want public praise. But think about it. Whenever you've worked really hard, don't you want someone to tell you thank you? And every time there, I can just kind of see, I'm like, I really do want to be told thank you. So it's very important when you're communicating with an S to appreciate them. Sincere appreciation, not false praise. They can smell that a mile away. And then C's, you know, C's, we're perfectionists and we like details. And if you're going to tell me something, you need to have data to back it up. Uh, when you're communicating, expect some why questions. It's not personal. It's not that we don't trust you. <laughs> we just need more data. And once we get a kind of worked out in our minds. So when you're communicating with a C, just be prepared to, you know, we're, I, I always say we are a car dealer's nightmare. Because one thing, when we go in to buy a car, <laughs> we've already done our homework. We know what color we want. We know what size engine we want. I mean, you know, <laughs> we know I've bought a car basically because of the stereo system in it before. I mean, I had already done all the homework on the car. I knew every detail of, that it had everything I wanted. I just needed to make sure he got the stereo system right. So, you know, talk about a nightmare. You like, anyway, <laughs> um, eyes. Uh, I love this analogy too, though, because an eye will buy a car based on the color where, you know, so anyway, as far as communication, though, I think understanding the more important piece of communicating, though, is understanding that we are coming to the table with our own perspective. And we need to always remember that when I'm communicating with you, I need to not just let it be about me. I need to try to understand where you're coming from. And knowing your style helps me do that better. So helps get a lot less hurt feelings. <laughs> so go ahead. Hi, uh, as you were saying, so basically each and every one of us has a dispersonality type, but more importantly, what you just shared was that you need to be emotionally sound and empathetic to the other person mm -hmm. and to gauge through questions from where are they coming from what is the real reason why they are pursuing a particular task or they or why are they speaking in this way what is behind it the emotions the feelings and only then you can realize uh, their true meaning of what they want to convey, convey to you. and regarding the example of c so just today we were exploring few software and automation tools and in the current scenario, maybe 20 years before or 10 years before, cloud was there in certain ways, servers were there, but hacking wasn't a big thing. But mm -hmm. data security, uh, data privacy has become such a common thing that, mm -hmm. that both of us, like my, me and my colleague, were extremely cautious in asking those compliant questions. Where is the data stored? What security features are there? How are you protecting? the customer's data, customer profile, because at the end of the day, it is you who will be affected too if something mm -hmm. were to go on wrong. So I feel like moving in between all those styles uh, is a good way to get the best outcome for you. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Rika, in our in initial discussion, we did discuss about developing deeper relationships. So how has uh, this personality type help you foster good personal as well as professional relationships? So on a personal level, and I like to use my husband as an example because he's a D personality. 
And, uh, you know, there was one morning I was telling him about this book and I was going into all this detail and I kind of watched his eyes glaze over, you know, and in before disc, I would have been hurt. I would have thought you're not listening to me. You don't care, you know, whatever. But I was able to kind of stop a minute and I looked at him because he's also taken the disc assessment. And so we can kind of, you know, and I looked at, I said, you really don't care, do you? I mean, you know, about all, because I was going into intricate details. I mean, like, I was even boring myself, to be honest with you. And he was like, no, I really don't. And I said, okay, so let me sum it up. And I told him what I, the message I wanted to give him in like two sentences. And so, but we both had a really good laugh because as a married couple, you know, you can get really offended that your husband's not listening. Um, I also have a lot more respect for the fact that he is wired as a D and he isn't afraid of conflict. And so I can verbalize to him that whenever he's going to talk to someone that's maybe not doing exactly what they should be doing, you know, I don't know, calling the bank or whoever, you know, I don't let it bother me as much. I, I'm, I tell him and we have open conversations. I'm like, that makes me really uncomfortable. So I'm going to step in the other room. He's never rude. He's not obnoxious. It's just, he can be direct and it bothers me. So just that awareness. Um, another thing on a personal level, I have a bunch of grandkids. I, I've got six and another one on the way. And so I love watching my grandkids and I have one grandson that is an I. And he lives in a house full of C's. His dad, both of his brothers are very analytical, very quiet, reserved, and he is outgoing. And he just, I feel so bad for him now because I understand that he's like just trying to fit in and he wants to be seen. And so I've actually changed how I interact with him. I will tell him, I'm going to spend 30 minutes with you. And then I just go and sit on the floor and spend 30 minutes with him playing or doing whatever he wants. But I put a time limit on it because he doesn't know when to end. And so it, it's really kind of nice that I can give him some boundaries, but I can still appreciate that he needs one-on-one -on -one attention. And it's important for him to be able to be noticed. Uh, in the business world, I've worked with a lot of doctors and a lot of doctors are deep personality and, you know, and they just, and I learned it as a nurse to just give them the facts, you know, the patient's vitals are this and, you know, but I've also learned to not let it hurt my feelings at all. If they're like, hurry up so I can get to the next patient, hurry up so I can, you know, and I have one doctor in particular I've worked with a lot and you don't walk up behind him and you, and you always wait till he's done with what he's doing. And it's just, it interrupts his chain of thought. And so, you know, it's kind of like just understanding him and, you know, and then again, like I said, understanding employees um, that need to socialize. Because when I was in leadership, I'm a C, I go to my office and I get started and I didn't understand the, the importance of walking slowly through the crowd. Our mentor teaches us that walk slowly through the crowd, say good morning, get to know your employees. It's important to a lot of them for me to know their kids' names. And so that's what I've learned. It's like just even, you know, just some people, it's very important to ask them how their day, their weekend was. And some don't really want you to know what their weekend is. And learning that about your, your people, it really makes you connect. So that. And just, uh, just one, one quick thought I would like your opinion to. And in the last seven, eight months, nothing before that, have a lot of people in your opinion have become like an I, and have you seen an increase in phone calls, uh, increase in like virtual meetup between families and friends, because we were kind of mixed up in our life before. Mm -hmm. we all want to talk in some way just to share our thoughts, even if it's like a short call. Have you come across such, uh, such uh, experiences of late? I have, and, and I think that that kind of goes into a piece that I wanted to make sure we covered and I kind of skipped over it and you, you hit on it. We need to be so careful not to put personality styles in a box 
-hmm. because there's more to us than our behavior styles. We also have our values and we have our skills and we have our story. And human beings need connection. Even really the most introverted human beings need, con need connection. And that's what I'm observing is that we've kind of had that taken away from us and you don't miss it until it's gone. So now people are really wanting and, and understanding they need to connect with people. They really need someone to talk to and reach out and phone calls and, and things. And as far as percentages, you know, about 69% of the population are S personalities. So S's are out there getting us all together. <laughs> via Zoom or via whatever avenue we can do safe, you know, with social distancing. So, but yeah, I have seen it. Well, I've, I've seen a lot more increase of, yeah. And we can also put it in a way that uh, we all connect in a normal life. So connection, communication was also always there. Disc or other personality type are just a way to change convert that connection to even more a deeper relationship that can add value to the both side, create a deeper understanding of meaning each and every person wants to truly share. So for our audience today that is listening, Erica, what advice would you give to them on how they can implement this teaching in their life? So, uh, you know, there's, a lot of ways you can do a disc assessment, you know, you can get online and Google it and, you know, but I think the where you get the majority of your benefit is if you do the assessment, but you have someone like me that's certified in it that can go over and kind of bring out the pieces to you so you can get deeper awareness. Uh, I think, especially in a work environment or in, even in a home environment between a couple, I think it's very beneficial for both to take the assessment. And then you can kind of, you know, go through and see where you complement each other or you might irritate each other. So you can kind of work on it a little bit. You know, it's awareness. You know, it all begins with awareness. Uh, so, you know, I think, you know, I, I would love to work with anyone that wants to get more information about DISC. And, you know, I'm, that, it's like the highlight of my day whenever I'm reviewing a DISC assessment with someone. So, yeah, and for the audience, Erica's detail would be present below and feel free to reach out to her and see how she can add value to your life and make you more successful in your personal and professional life. And now let's ask Erica for a fun question. What is a fun fact or a superpower that you would like to share with us today? Wow. Um, I have a lot of I was thinking about this. I was trying to get prepared because I'm a C, so I was preparing for this question. Um, I grew up, uh, I'm from West Texas, the Permian Basin, so I've grown up in oil country, and I think my fun fact would be when I was a teenager, I had a cousin that was working on a drilling rig, and I have no idea. I was like 15. I have no idea how he managed to do this, but he took me and his wife that's my cousin out on the drilling rig and he let me run the blocks up the derrick which is a really big deal of course there was no pipe or anything in the blocks but to actually go out on a drilling site with a great big huge derrick and run the equipment up and down is breaking about a million laws probably but <laughs> it's a fun fact i'm from oil field country so and yeah. that, that is how, like, I took the example of ranch from the Texas ranches and like a, a way where you can collaborate together. Uh, it's like a countryside environment. You're on a peaceful way, peaceful place where you can get together, work together, succeed together, and then come out smart, come out strong to, to the world. That is how, like, I figured that name too. So wonderful. Thank you so much for being with us today, Erica. And it was a pleasure having you on the podcast. Thank you. I've really enjoyed it. And uh, I, I, I really appreciate it. I love talking about DISC. I could go on for hours. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
So thank you everyone and I'm looking forward to having you all on the next episode of Skill Ranch podcast.